what we've learned so far from the Basta Bitcoin podcast. Madali yung pera as a means of payment, pero it's a horrible store of value. Yung inflation, yung general na pagtaas ng mga presyo ng bilihin, ay dahil sa money printing. Don't buy Bitcoin unless you understand Bitcoin. Hi, welcome sa episode 5 of the Basta Bitcoin podcast. Dito sa episode 5, we'll talk about a highly misunderstood na aspect of Bitcoin. Yung tinatawag na volatility niya. I think ito yung isa sa mga madalas na pinag-uusapan or pinagdidebatihan na aspeto ng Bitcoin. Pero unfortunately, hindi masyadong naiintindihan. Kaya naman, I think karamihan ng mga tao takot doon sa volatility ng Bitcoin so they stay away from even understanding or trying to uh, look into it. And pangalawa, I think yung volatility niya or apparent volatility niya is one of the reasons kung bakit maraming tao just trade Bitcoin or tingin nila Bitcoin is simply a speculative na token or asset. And pangatlo, I think it also prevents people from looking at Bitcoin seriously as a store of value. So, para maintindihan mo yung Bitcoin, I think kailangan mahiwahiwalay mo yung iba't ibang aspeto ng volatility. Yung unang aspect ng volatility is yung tinatawag na exchange rate volatility. I think 99% ng mga tao who say that Bitcoin is volatile ay nakatutok dito dun sa narrow aspect ng short term na exchange rate volatility niya. Pangalawa, uh, we can also talk about yung direction of that volatility over the medium and long term. I think kapag tinignan mo yung long term trend ng Bitcoin, then mag open up yung pananaw mo about Bitcoin as a store of value. And pangatlo, I think the most important aspect ng usapan tungkol sa volatility ay yung tinatawag na internal or system integrity ng any monetary system. So, pwede natin kumpara yung Bitcoin, for example, sa fiat or gold. And pag tinignan nyo siya from the standpoint of internal integrity or yung system stability, I think yung conclusion nyo is that Bitcoin is the most stable monetary system in history. Yung unang aspect is yung tinatawag na exchange rate volatility. So, lahat ng mga currencies, the dollar, the yen, the naira, the pound, bitcoin, they are traded all over the world, diba? all the time, and yung supply and demand nila determines yung exchange rate or price ng isang currency. Kaya kung konti yung demand for peso, babagsak yung value niya compared sa, say, dollar. Kung malakas yung demand for Bitcoin, tataas yung value niya compared sa peso or dollar. Ngayon, when it comes to volatility, mapapansin nyo na yung mga fiat currencies in general, no? medyo stable sila on a daily and even weekly basis. Ang ibig sabihin nun, tumataas or bumababa yung exchange rate ng kahit anong fiat currency only slightly during the course of the day. Kaya ang tingin ng mga tao, they're relatively stable. Especially yung matataas yung liquidity katulad ng dollar or mga highly traded na mga currencies katulad ng mga uh, sikat or malalaking currencies. Yung Bitcoin naman, it's volatile in the sense na yung price niya or exchange rate niya during the day uh, can move 1%, 2%, 3%, even 5%. 
And dahil yung Bitcoin is around 4 million pesos today or 37,000, 38,000 dollars. No? Yung movement up or down na 1 to 5 percent, uh, medyo nakakatakot dun sa mga tao. And that is of course true no? na magalaw yung Bitcoin on a daily basis. Kaya ang tingin ng mga tao talaga na it's a purely speculative asset dahil mahirap i-determine yung price niya on any given day. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? For me, ang, the only meaning of that is that Bitcoin is still very young. Kaya hinahanap niya pa yung kanyang stable price in the world. So, gold has been here for more than 5,000 years. Yung fiat system, uh, yung the dollar system today, uh, it was born in 1971. So medyo matanda siya kumpara sa Bitcoin. But yung Bitcoin kasi, uh, kailan lang siya nag-start na mag-trade and hindi pa siya naiintindihan ng mga tao. Kaya yung speculative mania is also there. Kaya naman, medyo volatile siya in the short term. But for me, and this brings me to my second point. The more interesting part is yung uh, direction ng volatility niya over the medium and long term. Ito yung hindi nakikita nung 99%. Dahil nga medyo bago pa yung Bitcoin, ang tingin ng mga tao when they see Bitcoin, ah masyado yung magalaw, nakakatakot na mag-save. How can something be a store of value if it moves 1-5% to on any single day? But, pag tinignan mo yung medium to long term na direction ng volatility na yun, isa lang yung trend niya. No? Up and to the right. No? And how do you explain that? Uh, the ultimate test ng strength of a currency is not yung exchange rate niya with respect to other currencies. The ultimate test of the strength ng isang currency or form of money is yung ability niya to purchase goods and services in the real world. So, hindi to yung, ano yung exchange rate between the peso and the dollar. No? Ano yung capacity ng peso or ng dollar na bumili ng pagkain, bumili ng iPhone, bumili ng bahay at lupa, or kung ano mang totoong, no? totoong bagay sa mundo. Because that is the real test of a... Uh, the strength of money. So, kung titignan nyo, diba, halos lahat ng currencies all over the world, pahina ng pahina against the dollar. Whereas yung dollar naman, pahina ng pahina yung purchasing power niya compared sa goods and services. Whether say, iPhone or real estate or food. So, ang tanong doon, why? And the answer is fairly obvious by now. It's because all fiat currencies, all currencies starting 1971, became so easy to print. No, dahil napakadaling i-print no, or i-inflate ng supply ng mga fiat currencies, ang dali rin nilang mawalan ng value over time. Kaya, if we put to the test lahat ng fiat currencies na to, all of them are actually dying. They suffer from a congenital disease called inflation. And that is because yung mga banko, pati yung mga central banko, it's part of their policy, no? yung inflation target nila. So, pag pumunta kayo sa website ng Banko Central, pag pumunta kayo sa website ng the Fed, makikita nyo na meron silang target inflation. For the Fed, it's around 2%. For Banco Central, 2 to 4 percent. No. If you want to be blunt about it, you know, tanungin mo, ano yung policy na yun? Ang policy na yun is pahinain ang pahinain yung kanilang currency. Dahil yung mainstream economics that support the economy today required you money printing as a way to stimulate or to pump prime the economy. We'll talk about that later on. But the only point na gusto kong emphasize dito is lahat ng mga fiat currencies, they're dying. Ang tanong lang, gano'ng kabilis sila humihina. But when it comes to Bitcoin, 
yung purchasing power niya ay palakas ng palakas over time. So, the peso is dying against the dollar. The dollar is dying against goods and services. Goods and services right, are essentially getting cheaper and cheaper in Bitcoin terms. So, yung mga Bitcoiners, yung mga highlight memes nila, yung mga pinagmamalaki nila ng mga memes, are actually yung memes that show yung purchasing power of Bitcoin over time. So, yung dalawang popular na memes are yung the price of iPhone in Bitcoin over the years and the price of housing in Bitcoin over the years. Kung titignan mo yung presyo ng iPhone, pati ng bahay, kahit saan, no? pataas siya ng pataas in fiat terms, whether in peso or dollar or British pounds. But, kung titignan mo yung purchasing power ng Bitcoin and yung presyo ng iPhone and ng real estate over time, pamura ng pamura yung iPhone pati yung real estate. Which means that it tells everyone something very objective about Bitcoin as a store of value. It is a very strong form of currency. Habang namamatay lahat ng mga fiat currencies against real goods and services or goods and services in the real world, eto nung Bitcoin, lumalakas siya ng lumalakas compared to goods and services in the real world. And that's very important. And that tells you na Bitcoin may be volatile in the short term, but over the medium to long term, it's volatile to the upside. And that is a kind of volatility na you will want if you're holding an asset or a form of money. Kahit anong form of money man yun. It just so happens that Bitcoin is perfect for that kind of a, uh, a, a store of value na function. Yung huling aspeto ng volatility na I'd like to discuss is yung tinatawag na system integrity or internal consistency or monetary integrity. Usually, yung, yung mga currencies can compare with one another. But if you're looking at yung internal na integrity ng system, ang tinitingnan mo lang is yung ano ba yung qualities or characteristic ng monetary system na yun that will make you conclude or come up with an assessment kung gaano siya ka-stable. So, for example, yung gold. No? Gold has been a very stable na monetary system. Siya yung reliable na monetary system for many societies for thousands of years. And isa sa mga rason is that, number one, ang hirap maghanap ng gold. You only get to find about 1.5 to 2.5 percent additional gold every year. Kaya naman kahit nadadagdagan yung mga ginto na nai, nahahanap ng mga tao or namimina ng mga tao, hindi siya na-inflate ganun kabilis. And because it requires a lot of energy, kahit anong technology or human resources gamitin mo, uh, stable yung money supply or yung number ng ng gold bars or gold coins na pwede mong ma-produce. And katulad nung sinabi ko dun sa isang episode, you, you cannot print gold. That's a problem. That's why everybody, you know, prior to the 21st century, uh, relied on gold as a basis for the monetary system. Ngayon, tignan mo naman yung fiat system. Yung fiat system, born in 1971. Ano yung most glaring na karakteristik ng fiat monetary system? Well, it's the easiest to print. And ano yung requirement para ma-print mo siya? You just have to be in power, you need to be a central banker, or you need to be a bank. And how do you do that? Just by pressing the button and voila. Especially now na hindi na kailangan ng paper to print additional money. So I invite everyone no, to look at yung tinatawag na money supply ng fiat currencies, yung tinatawag na M2. Tignan nyo yung money supply starting 1971 ng, ng dollar, ng yen, ng peso, or kahit anong fiat system. Pataas talaga siya, parabolic, which tells you na walang monetary guarantee yung fiat system. And yung lack of monetary guarantee, yung ease of printing ng monetary uh, system under the, the fiat regime, 
is expressed in the form of inflation. Dahil para lang yan isang ownership of stock in a company. Kapag ikaw meron kang peso, you're like a stockholder in the Philippine government. Pag meron kang dollar, you're like a stockholder in the US government. Yung isa sa mga pinakamasakit na pwede mangyari sa isang stockholder ay yung may dilute yung kanyang stock. And that happens kung dumadami yung stocks na available. That's exactly the case with the fiat monetary system. Dahil yung fiat ay walang discipline when it comes to uh, money printing or very minimal yung discipline niya. It's easy for governments to print money and therefore dilute the savings of the uh, the citizens or kahit sino mang tao yung may hawak ng pera nila. Kaya from that perspective, the fiat system is very unstable, mahina yung security niya and wala siyang monetary guarantee. In fact, yung mga banko because of their inflation target, they're telling you offhand, no, directly na Tatanggalan namin ng value yung fiat na money mo, yung pera na hawak mo at the rate of our target inflation. Assuming na mamit nila yung target inflation na yun. So, let's go to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, ano yung monetary guarantee ng Bitcoin? 21 million Bitcoins or 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis forever. And how do you get Bitcoins? By mining or by buying it or getting paid in Bitcoin? What is the security of Bitcoin? It's decentralized. It has a very high hash rate. It is protected by energy. And so it's the most secure computer network in the world. Right? So, kung titignan mo siya as a form of stock, kung merong kang Bitcoin, whether it's 0.001 or 0.1 or 1 or 10 Bitcoins, ang ibig sabihin nun na if you're within that system, there's no power in the world, no government, walang institution, walang private individual na may kakayahan na i-dilute yung Bitcoin mo. And that's very powerful. And that tells you that Bitcoin is not a volatile monetary system. It is, in fact, the most stable monetary system in the world. So in conclusion, uh, is Bitcoin volatile? Well, if you're looking at the short-term exchange rate, it is, in fact, very volatile. If you're looking at yung medium to long-term na exchange rate niya, it's volatile but to the upside, which is a good thing. And finally, kung titignan mo siya yung system integrity and yung monetary guarantee niya, and pati yung security niya, it is, in fact, the most stable and boring monetary system in the world. By the way, in case you find the contents of this podcast interesting, or if you're interested in doing a deeper dive into the history of money or the Bitcoin monetary network, you might want to check out the books I have written. Uh, they're available locally and internationally, locally through my website, and internationally on Amazon.com. Thank you.